Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Biscuit Rebellion, and I'm here to do a review on Teen Titans issue number 11 from DC Comics. And before we begin, I just want to point out that I am a bit sick at the moment. You might hear a little bit coughing. <coughs> Me clearing my throat or my voice might get a bit fuzzy here and there. So I'm going to try my best not to have that interfere with the video. But if that is the case, then I apologize for the inconvenience. With that being said, let's get started. The comic opens right where the previous issue left off. Manchester starts to monologue about how powerless Red Robin is right now. He also reveals a news broadcast from his phone about the incident in the bridge that happened in Chicago. And it appears that the blame is being put on the Titans. As Manchester continues to monologue, Red Robin picks up Raven and does what any sane man would do when hearing another monologue from Manchester. He breaks the glass window, jumps off, and commits suicide. I mean, he starts flying away. For sanity's sake, I'm going to ignore the fact that Manchester has forgotten the fact that Red Robin can fly. Guardian suggests some of the members of the Elite should follow Robin, but Manchester refuses, claiming that he is of no threat for now and knows where he's going. Two days later, we see Robin and the rest of the Titans and Chimera hold up in an abandoned store, I guess? Robin explains to the rest of the Titans what happened in Manchester's suite and decides the best way to clear Superboy's name is to go to prison and force one of the super criminals to do it. I just want to point out that Raven has been in that state for the past two days. Yeah. Anyway, Robin feels the need to remind everyone that they are Titans and friends and that Khan needs their help. He also tells them that he will understand if anyone refuses to help and walk away. Everyone basically declines on the offer and agrees to help, which Robin in turn thanks them. I guess guess this is supposed to be a touching scene which is kind of understandable but my problem is that it doesn't make sense considering the fact that everyone agreed to hide Superboy from the public eye and wanted to know what was going on in previous issues. So to me and probably to so many other people this touching scene is pointless and it kind of shows how much faith Robin has with his own team. Also, am I the only one who is a bit weirded out the fact that Chimera mentions the phrase, we are Titans? I say this because she considers herself a member of the Titans, which I never remember Robin even initiating her as part of the team. So, what the hell? On the next day, we see Dr. Psycho and Simon locked up in Metropolis's Armored War High Security Prison. They mention to one another a failed prison riot involving the Royal Flush Gang and are being punished by listening to a speech given by the Warden on loop. We then see Beast Boy sneaking in as a green mouse to a computer terminal. He talks to Red Robin about uploading a specific code, but before he can continue, a security guard who was right next to him somehow spots him now and points a gun at him. Before I continue, am I the only one who thinks that this speech bubble should go to this panel and maybe replace the previous speech bubble with another speech bubble that says, who are you or what are you doing here? I don't know, just saying. So the security guard starts to call for backup, which causes Beast Boy to turn into a polar bear and scare him off, and then quickly finish uploading the code. Backup arrives, but Beast Boy quickly turns himself into a green cockroach and tells Robin that he's good to go. Next, we see Chimera, Bunker, Robin, and an incapacitated Raven in what I believe is to be a garage. Chimera and Bunker are confused on why Raven is needed to come, and Robin explains all she needs to do is to tell him who they are looking for. So, Robin, why didn't you ask her when you guys were at the abandoned store? You guys had three days. What were you doing in those three days? Now, you can say that she's been passed out for three days straight, but the problem is, in the next panel, literally the next panel, she doesn't even look like she's been passed out. She looks like she's just tired or weak or me when I was watching the Fantastic Four movie. Anyway, Robin asks Raven who she saw, and Raven only mentions big red skin, three eyes, and a fin on its forehead. The person she is referring to is Despero, so Robin tells Bunker to stay here and guard Raven while he and Chimera find Despero. Oh, and it's revealed that the code Beast Boy uploaded gives Robin access to every door in the prison with just three simple digits. So Robin puts in the code to open the garage door, and all of a sudden, every single cell door in the prison is now open. I'm gonna have to assume that this wasn't the work of Robin, but somebody else. 
Meanwhile, in Who Gives a Shit's apartment, we see Guardian approach Manchester to inform him about what's going on in the prison, but Manchester cuts him off by saying that he already knows. Is there anything you don't know? I mean, come on. Back in the prison, we see Blockbuster grab Robin, convinced that he is the one who put him in prison. Chimera copies Bunker's powers and uses it to take down Blockbuster. Before I continue, if anybody wants to know more about Blockbuster, then read Hawk and Dove issue number 6. They are then approached by Livewire, who attacks Chimera, but Chimera absorbs her powers and uses it against her, which somehow hurts her? I don't know how that works, but okay. Robin is starting to notice something wrong with the program because he believes that the code that was uploaded was not meant to have all the prisoners be set free. Chimera tells Robin to ignore what went wrong and focus on Despero and asks where he's being kept. Robin responds that he is being located in the sub-basement of the prison and the two head downstairs. Back in the garage, Bunker tries to communicate with Chimera, but doesn't get a reply. He starts to worry a bit, but Raven assures him that they are alive, but deep below in the prison. Bunker asks if Raven is alright, and she responds saying that these past few days have taken a great deal out of her, and she is afraid that she hasn't been too much useful towards the Titans lately. You think? We then see other prisoners on the other side of the garage door, assuming that soon Bunker and Raven are going to be in trouble. Suddenly, someone breaks into the prison from the sky. The comic ends with Manchester telling the elite to go to the prison and shut it down, Despero is free, and the person who broke into the prison recently is Superboy who demands to give his life back. Teen Titans issue 11. Well... It's way better than the previous issue, I'll give it that. However, there are some inconsistencies found in this issue, which I don't feel like pointing it out right now, because it's pretty much almost the same in the previous issues, except less in your face and less direct about it. But something in this issue really did surprise me, but I'll leave that for last. The story is pretty much basic, going from point A to point B, nothing really much else to it. It's not all over the place, it's not just some random instances of build up here and there to what's going to happen later on in the series. It's not random events all piled up into one single issue. No, it's just basic, it's simple, it gets to the point, and that's what I like about the issue. There's really not much else for me to say about the story that I haven't already said in previous issues regarding the series as a whole, so I'm not going to repeat myself. However, I want to talk about the artwork. It's funny that I want to talk about the artwork because in almost every single review, I've rarely even acknowledged nor mentioned the artwork in the issue. And the reason why I haven't is because when it comes to comics, I'm more of a story person than the artwork. I, as dumb as that sounds, it's true. I'm more of a story than an artwork. The artwork, I really don't focus much or at least pay too much attention to it unless if it's terribly bad or amazingly good. The gentleman who drew this issue, I believe his name is Rickon. I have never seen his previous works. I have never seen any stories that he drew. This is the first time I've ever encountered him. And the funny thing about this is, he is the first artist that I've come across that has managed to do something that not only is it very important for the series as a whole, but also other artists who have drew or have drawn in this series before haven't managed to do as well as what he did here. And what this gentleman did is he drew these characters facial features that show genuine emotion. Now not everyone in this issue showed genuine emotion. In fact only two scenes I can think of right now and it's these two that I want to talk about in particular that show genuine emotion and show things that should have been in Teen Titans to begin with. The two scenes are the confrontation of Robin and his team when he finally discussed what they're going to do in order to help Superboy, and the scene with Raven. Now, with the scene with Robin and his confrontation with his team, it went down like this. Robin tells his team, guys, look, this is how things are going to be. We're going to go to prison, confront a superpowered criminal and convince if not force him to drop murder charges of Superboy in order to get him in the clear. 
I understand that this might be morally wrong. Things might get hectic. A lot of people are going to view the Teen Titans in a bad light, but we're going to do this in order to save a friend. And what does everyone do? They all looked at each other, and then they look right back at Robin, and everyone with this certainty in their face, with their facial expression showing that, yes, hell yeah, we're definitely going to help Superboy. We're going to follow you because we're all friends. And what Robin does is he tears up a bit and says thank you. Now, I mentioned before in the review that it's, it's kind of a pointless scene. But I still enjoyed it nonetheless because of the artwork, because of the facial expressions that each member showed. It showed trust. Like I mentioned before, <laughs> the fact that Robin had to mention this again shows that he doesn't have trust in his team. But I feel like this scene finally hits the nail in the coffin. He fully trusts his team because they're willing to go out of their way to do something that might be immoral, might make the team look bad towards everyone else in order to save a friend. Now, with the scene with Raven, Robin tries to get information from Raven about what she saw in Manchester's mind. And as she's giving him tidbits here and there, a few small descriptions, especially about Despero, the more she remembers, the more terrified and the more scared she is by what she saw in Manchester's mind. And the artist does a perfect well not perfect but a very good job showing us the reader that fear that she has she doesn't just feel scared she feels horrified she feels terrified by what she saw and it kind of questions what exactly did she see because the picture that we saw in the previous issue that's just a tidbit that can't be everything that's in Manchester's mind. He kind of said it to himself when Raven checked his mind. He kind of said that there's a lot of stuff in his mind that you would probably not want to know. And that's what happened to her. She saw something that she probably did not want to know or see, and she's now horrified by it. Now, you're probably wondering, what do these two scenes have anything to do with Teen Titans as a whole, and why is this crucial? That, or you're probably thinking that I'm looking too much into things. Well, if that's the case, then come on, guys, give me a break. This series is boring. I need something to praise it, at least. And this is all that I can find, so just just give me a break. As for why is this crucial, is because facial reactions or facial expressions like that improve character development. If only we had a writer who was good at character development, and this issue would have been gold. This issue could have been awesome. The only thing I am hoping for is I want this artist to continue drawing for Teen Titans. We could keep the writer. We don't have to. I would like to have a different writer, but if we have to keep the writer then let's keep this artist. This artist does a good job showing facial features, which is not something that a lot of artists know how to do. It's actually a very difficult thing to do. I would know because I, I draw. I try drawing facial expressions, and it's probably one of the most hardest things I can do, especially without over-exaggerating their expressions. All in all, the artist does a good job at what he did in this issue and I just hope for more of this individual and I really do wish that he continues drawing this series but for now he's the guest artist for this issue I'm pretty sure the next issue we're gonna have a different artist but if that's not the case and DC decides to keep him then that's freaking awesome I would love to see more of this individual if I have to give this issue a rating I'm gonna have to give it a 7.5 out of 10